There is a lot of information in today's world. From emails to website data, photos, videos, etc., all bouncing around the World Wide Web, to your computer, phone, and TV sending data within your own home network to each other, and even data just sitting in the storage on all of these devices. There's a lot of it. Because of this, there is a lot of opportunities for this data to be intercepted or stolen. But there is one thing that helps all of us make sure that the data that we have is only seen by its intended recipients. Encryption. So in this episode of Decoder, where I regularly break down a piece of technology for you guys, let's talk about what encryption is, how exactly it works, and how it helps to protect all of that data that's just floating around. Firstly, thanks to Bitdefender for sponsoring this video. Consistently ranked as the best antivirus software in terms of not just security, but also performance by top industry firms who rigorously test these things, they know some things about encryption for sure. So, firstly, what is encryption? Well, there are two states that encryption can be used. In transit, in other words, being sent from one place to the other, and at rest, in other words, say, sitting on a drive somewhere. So to start, Let's talk about in-transit encryption. As mentioned, tons of things are sending data to one another constantly. Encryption ensures that the data being sent can only be read by the intended recipient. Essentially, what it does is it takes otherwise easily readable data and using an algorithm along with a key, it converts it to seemingly random looking hard to read data. Then the intended recipient can, using the same algorithm and key, convert it back into data that is easy to read again. The general idea is that anyone who intercepts the data on its way doesn't have the algorithm and more importantly the key, and so they won't be able to read it. In addition to protecting the data, using some systems, it can also guarantee that the data is coming from the specific source that it was supposed to. Now there are two main ways that this works in modern encryption, symmetric and asymmetric encryption. In symmetric encryption, there is an encryption algorithm that has been decided by both parties to use to encrypt the data. This essentially is a mathematical algorithm called a cipher that takes the readable data called plain text and then converts it into seemingly random data called ciphertext. Now in order for both parties to be able to read the data that gets encrypted, they each need to use the key and plug it into the chosen encryption algorithm for it to encrypt the data. And then the same key can be used to decrypt it on the other end. A good example of this is say your home Wi-Fi network. Chances are that your home Wi-Fi is using the AES encryption or the advanced encryption standard algorithm. How this works is that firstly, all of your devices on the home network need to support this algorithm method along with your home router. Then when you make a password for your Wi-Fi network while setting it up, you actually create the key. This key gets plugged into the AES algorithm on the router and that scrambles the data in a specific way that it can only be unscrambled by a device after it connects to the Wi-Fi using that same key. Now, when using a public network, Technically, everyone on that network all has the same key, and so theoretically, they could see all of the data being transmitted over the network if they wanted to. And this is where VPNs, or virtual private networks, help. These essentially encrypt your data before it's sent over the network to their own server, where it is then decrypted and sent on from there. Data comes back and is re-encrypted before being sent back to your device. And VPNs are a cheap way to make sure that even on public networks, your data is still encrypted. If you want to check out Bitdefenders, I'll leave a link below. Now, asymmetric encryption is a bit more complicated, but here we go. In asymmetric encryption, also called public key encryption, there is also an agreed upon encryption algorithm that both parties have to each use, but instead of one key, there are two that are linked. So there's a private key that is kept secret by one party and a public one that is given out. And so anyone can find it and use it. The private key is used to encrypt data and send it to users. They then use the public key to decrypt it and read it. When they send the data back, they encrypt it with their public key. Now, in a symmetric system, anyone would be able to just use that same key to decrypt everyone else's data. But in an asymmetric system, however, only the private key can then decrypt that data. So anything encrypted with the private key can be decrypted by the public key, and anything encrypted with the public key can only be decrypted by the private key. Okay, I understand it's a bit complicated, but bear with me. Here's an analogy that, uh, th I'm gonna butcher this name. So, so here's an analogy that this guy came up with. I'll, I'll link to this below, by the way. Imagine you have a chest with a lock that instead of just having two states like normal, unlock and lock, we have three. Locked by turning all the way to the left, we'll call A. Unlocked in the middle, B. And locked by turning all the way to the right, C. Then there are two keys. 
Key one can only turn the lock clockwise, so from A to B to C, while key two can only turn it counterclockwise, so C to B to A. Now, let's say key one only has one copy and only one person has that copy. This is the private key we talked about, while key two is copied a bunch of times and handed out to anyone who asks for it, so a lot of people have it. This is the public key. So if the person with key one, the private key, puts some data in the chest, and then since it can only turn to the right or clockwise, it turns the lock to lock it in position C. Anyone now with key two can come up and turn the lock to the middle, B, since that's counterclockwise, and unlock it to get the data. They can then put their own data back in it, and since their key can only turn to the left again, they do so and lock it in position A. Now, anyone else with key two can't unlock this since they can only turn to the left, but the original person with key one can turn it to the right again to get to that unlocked position, take out the data, put their own data back in, turn it to the right to lock it again, and the cycle starts anew. Okay, so while this seems odd, it's actually really useful. In fact, there's something that you probably do all the time that uses this method, browsing the web. Now on the internet, websites can use this asymmetric encryption in the form of TLS or SSL. And if they do, that's when you see that lock icon in your browser and the HTTPS in the URL. So when you visit a site that uses SSL encryption, your computer sends a request to the site and the site provides the public key, key two from our analogy, to your computer. It then encrypts its data with it and sends it to the site. The site then uses its own private key, key one, to decrypt it then encrypts its own data, sends it back, and so on and so forth. So now when you say input your credit card info, for example, it is encrypted in transit to the site, as is all the other information the site sends back. There's also a way to add an additional layer of encryption on top of this that's become popular lately, and that's by using a password manager. The idea behind these is that they allow you to add an extension to your web browser and it'll generate very hard to guess passwords to use for logging into websites. It then encrypts this information itself and can only be accessed by your master login, the key. This makes it even less likely that if say a website gets hacked somehow and someone gets access to your password and account, they won't be able to use it for any of your other accounts since they all have very unique and unrelated passwords. Now besides in transit encryption, we also have at rest encryption. And this is pertaining to anything that's basically sitting still like on a drive. It actually uses the same symmetric encryption for the most part that we just discussed. So for example, your phone is probably encrypted by default nowadays and without delving into the back end of everything and how that works exactly, suffice it to say that your pin or password is associated with a key. So if someone were to take out the drives in your phone, which yes, you can absolutely do, and then try to access them somehow, they would need the pin password to then get that key to decrypt it. Now, your computer on the other hand isn't usually encrypted by default, but there are programs to help you do so if you wanted. These let you set a password to then encrypt a specific drive or a folder, and then everything in that folder gets scrambled and cannot be read even if someone were to steal your computer. In addition to these, there's also secure external drives, like this one that uses a fingerprint sensor to encrypt data on it and it can only be decrypted by using the correct fingerprint. There you go, a basic overall understanding of encryption, I hope. Now, if you wanna help your own data stay encrypted, please check out Bitdefender's Total Security 2020 product at the link below. It includes a free VPN for up to 200 megabytes a day, a file vault to encrypt the data on your computer, their super popular password manager, plus malware protection and performance consistently ranked as the best all over the web. Also, right now, they're giving anyone who signs up through that link below a free four month trial. So no harm in checking it out. Hope that was useful for you guys. Um, let me know in the comments other topics that you'd like to see me decode on this series. Also just general suggestions about the series um, overall. Would love to hear from you guys, always appreciate it. Uh, if you like this video though, please thumbs up or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next door to subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, Thanks for watching.